Welcome to the site specific recombination process. This is going to be the fourth section of third unit of molecular biology paper. Previously we saw about general recombination. Now we are going to see about a site specific recombination. Site specific recombination moves specialized nucleotide sequence called mobile genetic aid. Biogenetic elements are transposable elements, are jumping genes between non homologous sites within a genome. The movement can occur between two different positions in a single chromosome as well as between two different chromosomes. That is known as a site specific recombination. Each of these DNA elements contains a gene that encodes a transposase, an enzyme that conducts at least some of the DNA breakage and joining reactions needed for the element to move. Each mobile element also carries short DNA sequences that are recognized only by transposes encoded by that element that are necessary for the movement of the element. They also have some enzymes which can inactivate some of the antibodies like ampicillin, tetracycline, etc. The transposable elements, for example, T and T, they are going to evolve to have two genes. One is known as the tetracycline resistant gene. Okay, so like this, the site specific recombinations are achieved by the movement of mobile genetic elements are jumping genes are transposons that's why the fragment which is transposed from one place to other place it uses an enzyme known as transposase okay then these are the two major mechanisms proposed to explain site specific recombinations one such mechanism is known as Transpositional site specific recombination. It usually involves breakage reactions at the ends of the mobile DNA segments embedded in chromosomes. And the attachment of those ends at one of many different non, -homolo non homologous target DNA sites. It does not involve the formation of heterotuplex DNA. During this transpositional site specific recombination, there is no involvement of Heteroduplex combinations are possible. Conservative site specific recombination. It involves the production of a very short heteroduplex joints and is therefore requires a short DNA sequence that is the same on both donor as well as the recipient. So, the presence or the occurrence of heteroduplex DNA is the major difference between these two mechanisms. One is known as the transpositional. The other one is the conservative. So, in the case of transpositional site specific recombination, there is no formation of heterodeplex. Whereas, in the case of conservative site specific recombination, there is a formation of heterodeplex DNA process. And then, you can see some of the examples here IS3, insertion sequence 3, transposon 3, TN3, transposon 10, TN10. You can see that. This cyan color regions are indicating that they are containing an enzyme known as transposase. The enzyme is required for the transport of this particular fragment. In addition to this enzyme, they might also have some resistance sequences. For example, here you can see ampicillin resistance sequence is present in TN3. Similarly, a tetracycline resistance gene is present in TN10. So, when you move this TN10 from one organism or one location of the chromosome to the other location or from one organism to other organism, you provide the resistance nature. So, that is what the advantage or significance of this recombination process. So, the microbes will get additional character. Okay, now, we will see now one by one these two mechanisms. First, we will see about the transpositional site specific recombination. So, these transpositional site specific recombinations are again 
can be explained with three different mechanisms. One is known as the DNA only transposons, a retroviral like retroposons, or non retroviral retroposons. When you say DNA only transposons, it is going to transport, it is going to move the DNA in the form of DNA. That's why it is called as DNA only transposons. Retroviral like retrotransposons means what? It is going to transfer the DNA, RNA into DNA and then it will transpose. Non retroviral, it is going to transpose in the form of RNA itself. That is what the major difference between these three mechanisms. Okay. So now the examples for this DNA only transposons is P element in Drosophila, TN3 in E. coli, TAM3 in Snapdragon, ACDS in Maze. Retroviral viral like retroposons are OPI in Drosophila, TY1 in yeast, THE1 in human, DS1 in mice. Non retroviral transposons recombinations are possible with the help of F element in Drosophila, L1 element in human, and SYN4 in mice. So it, it means that in Drosophila, in mice, in E. coli, in Snapdragon, in human, these Transpositional trite specific recombinations are occurring. Okay, that is what you will get information from these three mechanisms. So, in first DNA only transposons, it is transported as DNA. Retroviral, it is transposed with the help of this LTR sequence. In the case of non retroviral, it is moves as the form of this RNA. Now, we will see that different mechanisms. So this is what a mechanism of DNA only transposon mechanism. Here cut and paste. Here the mechanism is going to be a cut and paste mechanism. Here it is followed for this particular uh, transposons. You can see that cut and paste mechanisms. The transposon regions is there. It contains a particular end sequences. The end sequences can be folded. Then a NIC is created and these transposons removed from a particular point and then this removed DNA can be inserted into a some other region which has particular sequence, specific sequence. So that is known as the DNA only transposons and in the case of cut and paste mechanism, there should be a cut and paste mechanism to be followed. Okay. Then the other mechanism for this DNA only transposon is replicating transposition. That means a copy is retained in its original position, new copy is synthesized in another position. So that is where you can see here the copy of transposon is present and then it gets attached within another DNA by the action of enzyme transposes and this will synthesize a new strand like this strand and it gets inserted into another point, another location. So, the new strand is synthesized through this replication. That is why this mechanism is known as the replicative transposition mechanism. So, a new DNA fragment is inserted by this replication mechanism. Then we will see the other second mechanism of this transpositional retroposal mechanism. That is known as a retroviral life on the basis of this LTR. So there is a presence of a viral DNA and then we might have another DNA. Both of them are having some particular sequence recognizing region. These two sequence regions are recognized and the viral DNA can be incorporated in the gene DNA. How this DNA is incorporated here? That is what the role played by the enzyme integrase. So the integrase recognizes a particular sequence from the viral DNA and the genomic DNA and it will make a nick and then it will join the two DNA pack. So that is how the retroviral like retroposons can be transferred. The non retroviral like transposons, how they transfer, say for example L1 RNA, this RNA will have a polyethyl and this polyethyl will bind to this particular enzyme reverse transcriptase and then these enzymes connects this particular L1 RNA sequence 
to the genomic DNA and then the genomic DNA will start replicating by recognizing this A sequence. A new DNA is synthesized which is copy of this particular DNA fragment. Then after this DNA is synthesized, the RNA is released and complementary strand is also synthesized. And after the synthesis of these two complementary strands, the DNA is again combined to a social position. So now you get a new sequence is get incorporated into the genomic DNA with the help of this RNA form. So that's why it is known as the non-retroviral retroposons. So the retroposons RNA form, in the form of RNA, the new sequence is gets inserted in the DNA. That is why it is called as a non-retroviral retroposon. Then the other mechanism which is known as conservative site-specific recombination. So this conservative site-specific recombinations will be used to combine a particular genome of a lambda or a fudge into the host gene. How this particular uh, fudge sequence gets incorporated into the host genome by recognizing particular sequence. So that is what possible here you can see that it has a particular sequence and the genome will have also have a particular sequence. These attachment sequences are recognized by this integrase enzyme. After recognizing, it make a nick in both the strands and then it will join the both the strands. Once the strands are combined, the integrase are released. Now you get the DNA gets incorporated into the particular host gene. So this is how the conservative site specific recombinations are possible. What is the advantage of this particular conservative a site specific recombination process. These processes are actually used to switch on or off the gene expression process. Okay. You can see here there is a marker gene which will produce a marker protein. If this gene is expressed, we will get this particular protein. And this protein will have a particular promoter sequence. Okay. So now we are making this as a marker gene. Okay. So during this site recombination process, this marker gene is going to last. Okay. In reverse process, this marker gene can be placed into some other particular gene, particular region. So that that cell will express this particular protein. Are you able to get the point? That is, the gene is present in a genome. Since it's a transposable element, it can be removed off from one location and it can join to the other location. When it is removed, you may not have a marker protein. When it is joined, you will get a marker protein. Okay. So depending upon that, you can see this, a brief induction of a recombination enzyme during the development. Occasional cell loses marker gene and express the gene of interest. So, when this marker gene is removed off, original gene is expressed. That is what here you can see. Similarly, if the number, the same cell is start proliferating it, then the number of cells without the marker gene will increase. Okay. So, the expression of new gene is possible if this marker gene is released off. If this marker gene is added to the cell, it prevents the expression of a particular gene. So that, that is how this genetic process of conservative site specific recombination will express certain gene, removal of this particular marker gene, particular transposable gene. And similarly, addition of this particular gene will suppress the expression of the gene. That is turn off. So when it is removed, it will turn on the gene. When it is added, it will turn off the gene. So that is how this conservative site specific mechanisms are used to regulate the gene expression. Are you able to follow this? So that is how both this site specific recombinations as well as the general recombination process. All these recombination process are used to introduce or create new characteristics or they are used to gain new characteristics. They are used to gain the last characteristics. 
varieties recombination process. New varieties created, additional characteristics are gained, the last characteristics are gained by this mechanism. So in a nutshell, again we are uh, recalling about the uh, classes. In this class, we saw about uh, site-specific recombination. The site-specific recombination will occur in two ways. One is known as the transpositional site-specific recombination. The other one is the conservative site-specific recombination. The transpositional recombination means what? Movement of a particular transposable element. How these transposable elements will move from one place to other place? Again, there are three mechanisms are proposed. One is known as the DNA only transposons. I do remember you remember that. There are about three, three mechanisms. DNA only transposon. So it moves as a DNA molecule or retroviral like retrobosons which can move via an RNA molecule as an intermediate product. Then the other mechanism is known as the non-retroviral retroposon mechanisms. And in this, you can see the reactions are achieved with the help of a RNA molecule. There is no involvement of virus here. That's why it is known as a non-retroviral. In the previous case, why it is called retroviral? It contains the retroviral sequence LTR, plays a vital role. That's why it is known as a retroviral-like retrobosons. But in other case, there is no such sequence is involved, so it is called as non retro retro transposons. And this is how three mechanisms are proposed for a transposable element like retro transposons. Okay. Then we saw about this conservative site specific recombination process, which will help for the attachment of a particular DNA to a specific site. Okay, so this is what about the site specific, especially conservative site specific. This conservative site specific will helpful for switch on the gene or off the gene. If this particular transposable element will attach to a particular DNA, then it will off the gene expression. When it is removed off from a particular point, then it will increase the gene expression. That can be studied in different cell culture techniques. And we have evidence about this conservative site specific recombination. So, with this, I would like to conclude the present seminar or say presentation. To this particular uh, topic, if you have any questions, queries, you can contact me through mail id sivabayo or gmail.com or you can contact through a phone 9865-86168. These are the books which are followed for the preparation of this recombination. As before, again, once again I am saying that to know about this recombination details, we better read few of the genetics books. Benjamin genetics book you can refer or you can refer principles of genetic or you can say the Griffith books of introduction to genetic analysis to get more knowledge of uh, these recombination mechanisms. Even for generalized recombination also you can refer these uh, genetics books rather than the other uh, molecular biology books. But the molecular biology books also will have information about this recombination. Okay. But in detail, if you want to read in depth, it's better you can refer these uh, genetics books to know much about this uh, recombination process. And the, I already explained the importance of this recombination process, which are used to give a new characters and new, uh, say, special, uh, new uh, law. That is, the recombination is used to provide new characters as well as you can get new uh, futures. The last, last characters can be gained by this recombination. That is what is advantages of this particular recombination process. And we should know also much about this recombination. Okay. So with this, I conclude the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Omidar, for listening. 
this particular presentation. Thank you.